We just wrapped up another great Q&A. Can't wait for you guys to watch this one. We talked about bro splits. We talked about uh, free, free foods. Who <laughs> doesn't like free food? And we also talked about how to figure out your BMR. Yeah, and... we went on a couple little rants as yeah. well. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a new episode of... Hashtag... As Liveling TV. That's right. This is the show where we take your questions on social media when you hashtag them. Ask Live Lean TV. <laughs> uh, you can post those on Twitter and we'll put our handles here on Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook. Just make sure you use that hashtag and not other ones like Live Lean TV or Q&A or anything else. Get Just it right, it people. We're on, we're on episode 37. We should, you should have this down on <laughs> this unlock by now. <laughs> So, Most of you have been doing an amazing job, I have to say. We're impressed. Yeah, the people. How many questions we're getting? The, and, yeah, yeah, we good. still we still got quite a bit of questions coming through. Um, so we're also thinking we were just talking about how we can spice up the show a little bit because, like I said, we are on 37. We've done 37 shows in this format. So if there's any different formats, we were thinking of possibly doing like a call-in show or we call you or people call you on the phone and be like what's up yeah so just like some fun things to make it more in, uh, engaging and just a little more exciting than and uh, like involve you guys even more so yeah. we can like hear your voices and see your faces and stuff i just think that would be just so much fun we actually think we're going to do some calls so like yeah. basically we're going to be like one day on snapchat or on twitter or facebook we'll post give us your phone number and then we're going to actually, we're, we're planning on calling some people just out of the blue, like say, hey, yo, what's up? You know, can we answer any of your questions? So Another, stay yeah. tuned for some fun things coming up. We want to really increase the <laughs> engagement in, uh, in our social media. I'd love to do a Snapchat Q&A where you guys send us like a Snap video so we can, you know, feature you on the show and then have like an actual kind of almost live conversation. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Let's, let's jump into the show. First question on Twitter from Leonie Just says, do you have any Live Lean recipes, healthy snack ideas for kids? By the way, Kyla is super cute. Kyla is super cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> no bias it, there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think we always kind of tell people that all of our recipes, or most of them I would say, are gonna be kid friendly. And you know, just because you're eating healthy food doesn't mean the kids aren't gonna like it. You gotta to try to introduce them to stuff that's healthy. Yeah, but. I'll throw this one out to you. We just did an episode of, um, I think I showed, shared three healthy snack recipes. And I showed you how to make them. There was coconut macaroons. There was oh, kids macadamia nut bites. Yeah. I, I was, go watch, we'll link this one up down below. Go make those, feed them to your kid. And see how and they react. If yeah. they like say, Ugh, this is gross, call me and I'll send you $20 <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> um, but, you <laughs> because know, they're freaking delicious. Yeah, we also have like our Lively mac and cheese, which I feel like kids would eat. And then, you know, I don't know. There's so many, like those little burger sliders, like depending on the yeah. age of your kids, like the, I feel like a lot of our recipes are already kid friendly, yep. but if you're talking about like infants, babies, I would just keep it plain and simple and do like mashed fruits and veggies. Yeah. Like that's what we're going to introduce to Kyla first is basically just fruits and veggies plain. But, um, you know, it really depends on the age of your kids. So maybe, um, you know, check out some of our recipe books and yeah, flip through so, and see thing if if anything like looks like what your kids would like. That's what I was gonna say is those three recipes I just talked about, like the macaroons, the date bites, the cookies, like those were out of my E Clean Live Lean cookbook. So there's over 200 recipes in there. They're friggin' delicious. Um, some of the other recipes you're talking about, our Live Lean 20 diet book is- Yeah, Live Lean 20 diet, I feel like almost everything in there- They're delicious. I would serve to kids. Like this is yeah. the thing guys. Chicken like, fingers and burgers and pasta. When you yeah. know how to cook, like when you follow, and it's not even like you need to know how to cook, you just need to have a plan. Like you need to be like, okay, step number one, put chicken here. Step number two, add these spices. Yeah. Like yeah. that's what these recipe books that we create give to you guys. So it's like, you don't have to be a cook. You just have to be able to read is one. Yeah. And you have to be able to follow instructions is two and have the food there. So I feel like it's as easy as making like a craft mac and cheese dinner, right? Like when you make that, all you do is follow the directions on the box. So you might as well exactly. just follow a healthy recipe. So it's the same amount of effort. So this idea of kid food and adult food, let's just call yeah. it food <laughs> and let's just call it freakingly delicious food. Yeah. So we'll leave that with you guys. The links to those cookbooks are down below. 
I highly recommend you jump on board I and feel get like in. Some parents are sitting there shaking their heads like, oh, you don't even understand how picky kids are going to be. Well, we're going to show yeah. you guys. Like, we vlog and we show you parts of our real life. And if Kyla turns out to be a really picky eater, we'll show you guys how we handle that and these, in the future. And these negative people are the same people that are saying, oh, wait until you have kids and see if you can still maintain your health. And yeah, your, and your, your body's going to Your go body shit. shit. Like, yeah. Say goodbye to your abs. Say goodbye to sleep. Really? <laughs> really though? Like take the challenge <laughs> and work. That's what we do. We work at it. Yeah. And we're just hoping to be a positive example for all moms and dads out there and show you how to balance fitness and family. Because to us, there's no it's other not, option. It's not one or the other. Yeah. There's you can no other absolutely option. have both. Okay. So Chris Bravo says, what's your opinion on bro splits? Yeah, bro splits. I think he's talking about workout splits, right? Yeah, I assume so. Or is he talking about the splits like <laughs> with your legs? Well, I assume, who is it again? <laughs> Chris Bravo. Chris ba Bravo from Twitter. Um, I would say that he means like, you know. Like the workout, workout schedule. Splits. Yeah. I'm a fan. Like it really depends on what your goal is. So when my goal was to add muscle, the bro splits, they come Work into like play. Like a charm, yeah. <laughs> when your goal is to burn fat, the bro splits probably aren't the best way to do it. You got to keep your right. body I moving. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's the most effective for fat loss. Yeah, so for fat loss, like it's more circuit style, but it's also keeping the weights up. So they heavier the weights. So like afterburn training style. So that's what my Live Lean Afterburn program does is you're still lifting weights, you're still doing the compound exercises, and you're still lifting heavy, but you're keeping the rest period short. So it's like, boom, go here, go here, go here. And your heart rate is going through the roof. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But then like my Live Lean Mass program, which is a muscle building program, that's where the bro splits come in. It's like, okay, like let's hit our muscles with volume, enough volume right. to create change. And uh, you know, you hit your chest and your back day and those sort of things. So Absolutely, once yeah. again, it depends on what your goals are, but um, you know, hit us back with another question. Let us know what your goals are and we can tell you. I'm not a bro, but like, I'm sort of a bro. You, yeah, well, if I'm you, sort of a bro. If you saw my Instagram post that I posted, I don't. Whenever we, this is out, oh yeah, I was more it. of a bro than you. I, I said like Jessica's like we we taking a selfie together. Jessica's doing like a bro like bicep curl, and I'm like, yeah, yep, my boo is more of a bro meathead than I am. Well, you know, like to be honest with you guys, I've always had more muscle building goals than fat loss goals because I kind of started like skinny fat when you know when I was beginning to train. Like I had cellulite, I had fat in the wrong places, but maybe Mainly, I just didn't have enough muscle. So for me, fitness, like my game plan has always been more about building muscle yep. more so than losing weight. So for me, like I love the bro split because I'm used to it. It's like what has really helped me transform yep. for where I needed to go. But for most of my clients and most people that we train online, it's more like circuit training after, but yeah. afterburn style training is better when you have a lot of fat to lose. Yeah, and that's what I, that's, that's like, I've done it all guys. I've been in this game for a long time now yeah. and that's, you know, where I am at my, in oh, my stage now. Oh, you've done like pretty much every training split or training style. Every training modality there is. Yeah. And I feel like I have two and at this point. I like athletic yeah. style training, like quick, yeah. explosive, heavy. But the bro split definitely has its time and place for no, certain No, it does. Situations, I'm not so. knocking it at all. Yeah. Okay. okay. You can ask the next one. Next question on Snapchat from Dex to Real. How are you going to celebrate once you hit 200,000 subscribers on YouTube? We already did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We're, yeah. I think we're at like 210,000 or plus. Yeah. Like, it's crazy to think like we're going to be able to say we have, we're, we hit a quarter million. I know. Like once we hit 250, it's like, if somebody asks us, how many subs do you got? It's no longer like 210,000. We'll just say quarter mil. Quarter mil. <laughs> and <laughs> no, I mean, maybe. I know it's just a number and, um, and there's tons of channels out there that are higher than that, like way higher than that. And it's, so it's all relative but and everything, but yeah, it is, it does feel good to know that like we've reached that many people and that many people are interested in health and fitness. It's, it's a super, it's really cool. super, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just humbling, humbling experience to know that like we've created something from nothing. Yeah. Starting with the number zero. Starting with just one video. To, yeah. Like one subscriber, yeah. going to two subscribers, two videos, and so on, which is just like uh, your weight loss. It's like start with that first workout, start with that start first meal. Start wherever you are. Lose and go that forward. first pound. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, so decks like... What did we do to celebrate, though? Honestly, we didn't celebrate this one as big as we had smaller ones because I feel like 10000 was a big deal. Yeah. 50000 was a big deal. 100000 was yeah. a big deal. And we'd usually, like, go out for drinks and a nice dinner and stuff. This time around, we kind of just were like, Heads yeah, buried. we did it. Yeah. And then we well, just kept on working, you know? We didn't really have, like, a big celebration this time. Yeah. But maybe we will for the quarter mill. We also have a kid this time around. Yeah, it's so we true. Can't really we had a newborn baby. Go out so. and get turned up. Yeah. <laughs> No martinis for us right now. Okay, so Michael says, Brad, can you help explain BMR more? In order to maintain weight after weight loss, would I need to eat at BMR or could I eat more than that? Okay, good question. Yeah. So BMR, you want to explain? I think you just did a video on that, didn't you? Yeah, I feel like I've been talking about this a lot lately and I'm always helping clients with it and everything, but your BMR is your basal metabolic rate. So yeah, I was just talking about this on camera today. It's the amount of calories it takes for you just to survive, not including your activity level. Yeah, so if so, you laid in bed all day, yeah. this is the if amount of calories. Yeah. your body would require yeah so um so that's the answer so that, to answer the question i mean go. well no but i think it's really important that you know especially michael that you do need to factor in activity yeah. because you're probably not laying in a bed all day you probably at Hopefully least not. walk around <laughs> yeah go to work or school or whatever so you need to include your activity factor even if you're not that active you're still somewhat active so there's a multiplier you can find when you do your BMR calculations online. Most BMR calculators will give you also the activity factor, which is the next step after figuring out your BMR. Um, so in order to maintain weight loss, you would want to eat at your BMR plus current activity level. So that's without the surplus or deficit. To maintain weight loss? Yeah. What, does that, what do you mean by maintain like, weight loss? Okay, say you're, you, know, you start at 150 pounds and your goal is 130 once you reach 130 then you kind of want to eat at the same level maintenance yeah at your maintenance calories for 130 with your activity level if that makes sense so yeah. you don't you no longer eat for a 150 pound person you eat as if you're a 130 pound person does that make sense yeah well i think yeah like you whatever just, you confuse me is. the way you termed it like so basically if you want to lose weight you have to take your bmr your activity level, then you have to be below that. So what we recommend is to lose three, weight, yeah. 300 cal so like, yeah, weight loss. So yeah. 300 calories is what we say. Yeah. Because like the live lean way is it's not to slow, starve steady, yourself. Yeah. 300 calories is enough a day that you're going to just consistently lose weight. You're not going to eat into muscle and you're not going to feel starving like a freaking zombie. Absolutely. So it's, you know, it's, we're in the long game here, guys. I got to yeah. keep reminding you of that. Living lean is the long game. It's not as quick as you can do it because those, that quick doesn't last. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you guys probably know from experience, if you starve yourself, then you usually eventually binge and like give in to temptations and everything. So what we want you to do is start focusing on eating healthy, but know how many calories you need to eat to reach your goal and then follow that day in and day out until you reach that goal. So it's not just about being good or being perfect for a week or something. It's about the long-term vision. So yes, you should calculate your BMR, but then include your activity factor and then also add or subtract for a weight loss or weight gain goal and then eat at that maintenance yeah. level for good and we have a video on how many calories you should eat a day yeah uh, we'll link that down below go check out that video next question on snapchat from anthony the james says hi mate here's a question for you you have to choose between a you are only allowed to eat junk food like mcdonald's but you can exercise or b you are only allowed to eat healthy food, but can't exercise for the rest of your life. Which do you choose? Aww. What's up, mate? So I, I say, honestly. <laughs> oh my God. What would you do? I don't know. They're both awful. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like you're asking the question, like, eating McDonald's would be fun. Oh, Like, you're really? only allowed to eat junk food. Maybe not. Maybe, I don't know. But, um, but you can't exercise. I mean, honestly, I've always said this. If you had to do one or the other... Get your diet in check. Yeah. Um, like you look at the world right now. The gyms, like they're pretty full, right? Like people are moving. Yeah. They're exercising more than what they've ever had. Yet we're still way overweight because people don't have a clue how to eat. And the government's definitely not helping out with the way that they're talking about how you should eat the standard American diet, the sad diet. Uh-huh. Um, and the sweet and beverage corporations the, yeah, also are working against all, you. Yeah. All these studies you see out there are backed by Coca-Cola, by Pepsi. Like, it is tough. And then you just got little old people like us on Live Lean TV, less than a quarter million subscribers, <laughs> giving you guys the real deal on what you need to be doing, yet... Still. People will watch 
And then they'll be like, I need to know how to do this in two weeks. How do I lose weight? You're at the wrong channel. Honestly, if yeah. you want to get results in two weeks, once again, guys, living lean, we're in the long game. We're not selling these magical pills. We're selling you a lifestyle that you do every single day for the rest of your life. And if you've been watching this channel for like a year or more, I mean, we've been on for like four years yeah. now, right? If you've been watching us since the beginning and you still have weight to lose, then we know you're not doing exactly. what we're telling you to do because living lean is legit and it works. Yeah. And all you have to do is look at our testimonial success stories to see that people who are actually doing living it. lean and eating well, like yeah. regardless if they exercise or not, like exercise really is optional. If I had to do that, I think I would take the eat healthy and oh, not absolutely. exercise, even though I'd be miserable not know, exercising. But still, yeah. your body composition is gonna be a ton better if you ate well, even if you couldn't exercise. Yeah, like I remember I used to say that if, if there was like something free in the world, if it was either having a personal chef who knew how to prepare food healthy or a personal trainer, who like, could kick your ass who, in the gym. Who could yeah. kick your ass in the gym. It's no cost to you. Um, how would you get faster results? The chef. The chef. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that if you had somebody who had your macros on point, made the food taste good, and uh, you didn't work out versus a personal trainer who kicked your butt in the gym, but then you went out and ate whatever you want. Especially 100% McDonald's diet. Guarantee you the chef would have you in better shape than the personal trainer. And you know, we always say abs are made in the kitchen and I still believe in that, but I don't think your abs would be like shredded. Like no, if you couldn't you, work out and you could only eat healthy, you would be slim, but you wouldn't have like definition, unfortunately. Well, you might, but... Which would be sad for me, but I think I'd rather be slim without definition than like pudgy I'm taking, and strong. I'm taking both because A, I love working out, like it's my healthy drug, and B, I love to eat healthy, so. And we like being lean, and lean is C. a combination of eating well and working out. You don't get lean just from eating healthy, All if right. that makes sense. Next yeah. question. Okay, <laughs> I don't like none of those options. <laughs> okay, Jarrett 2 says, hey guys, I had a question for Ask Living TV. What set rep range for squats would you recommend for someone trying to build muscle, specifically quads? Basically, I'm wondering if I should be going with a lighter weight and hit 10 to 12 reps or heavier and hit six to eight reps or even heavier with a couple of reps for each set. Nice, I like these kind of questions. Yeah, very, very good. Especially uh, telling us what your goal is. So That's, what was the goal? Yeah. Was to, to build muscle. So to sort of build quads. muscle, okay. Yeah. So what I would have you do is I would put you in a volume training style workout. So uh, like I've been saying, like live lean mass. So the question, the answer would be 10 reps and do a lot of sets. So mm -hmm. for instance, High like um, 10 sets of squats, those so 10 sets of barbell squats, and, but you're not lifting so heavy that you can't get through all 10 reps of 10 sets. So that's the yeah, key so right it's there. it's not ultra heavy, but it's heavy enough to be difficult for 10. Yeah, it's like your first, typically your first four sets, you're at the weight that you're at, you're kind of like, I need to go up in weight. Yeah. But trust me, once you get to set six and seven, you'll be like, I'm quitting. But trust me, once again, once you get Don't past quit. six or seven, once you get to that eighth set, you're like, oh, I feel so good, I can get through this. And then the next day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be like, you're gonna jump out of bed and you're gonna fall flat in your face because your legs are jelly. <laughs> so honestly guys, volume training for building muscle is like one of the best modalities, the best approaches. That's what you get in Live Lean Mass. So that's what I would have yeah. you at. And you say your, your 60 uh, rep scheme is more of a strength building, so you still will create a muscle building stimulus, but you're pretty much building more strength than you are the hypertrophy cycle of it, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say, you know, building muscle, specifically quads, if you want to see the quads like pop out, you know, then it is more of a hy hypertrophy rather than a strength. Yeah. So yeah, I would say honestly, anywhere between eight to 12, I would say is the kind of yeah, right range for hypertrophy, but it depends on your tempo of lifting also. Yeah, and how many sets. Like, yeah, but like, that's why 10 is like a really good yeah. happy medium. Like you said in the, in the Live Lean Mass program, we choose the number 10 because it's in between eight and 12. So it kind of guarantees that you're going to be in that range of where you're getting hypertrophy and some strength building at the same time. But yeah, yeah, if you just do like, like you said, just a couple of sets with really heavy weight, you're going to get really freaking strong, but you probably won't see as much yeah, muscle as you would if you were to lift a little lighter and more reps. Exactly. Okay, Maria Eve on Snapchat says, Hi, Brad and Jess. I've been loving the podcast lately. Thanks for all the info. It truly has been helpful to me. Good. I've been trying to focus on health and fueling my body with whole foods, and I, and I was wondering what are your thoughts on lactose-free Greek yogurt? Not coconut yogurt or vegan, just plain lactose-free. 
I do not get along very well with dairy as I'm also gluten intolerant, but I do enjoy having about a half a cup of lactose-free yogurt topped with frozen cherries. But is it heavily, but is it heavily modified and should I avoid it, view it as an occasional treat? Thank you so much, all the love. Okay, great. I, um, I've never had lactose-free dairy products, have you? No. I wonder what that would taste like. Probably not good, but if you added cherries <laughs> because, to it. Like, yeah, lactose is like the sugar in dairy, yeah. so I feel like it might taste really but, like, I mean, sour. But I well, mean, it sounds like she's eating it and she likes it, so yeah. she's wondering, like, is it still good? So the taste is probably checked off. Yeah, like, well, I'll just give you, from our standpoint, we don't particularly like to include dairy in our daily diet. You guys know we have it every once in a while as a cheat meal. We'll have occasional ice cream, occasional pizza with cheese on it, more than occasional, like once a week. <laughs> and so we do like have dairy sometimes, but, and we have whey protein shakes, but yogurt is just kind of at the bottom of our list. It's just not something we buy or really are interested in. So I haven't personally tested that on whether it helps me stay lean or not. So I can't really tell you, but I would say if it's working for you, you're loving the results that you see, then I don't yeah. see a problem with it. I mean, it sounds like what you're eating is a pretty healthy alternative because the lactose in dairy is kind of what people have the intolerance to. So that's taken out. Mm -hmm. But then there's the whole side of the dairy industry with the growth hormone and everything that's in it. So that's something to look at. Uh, but you know, honestly, at the end of the day, if it's not, ha doesn't have a bunch of added sugar into it, you're having it occasionally, you're adding cherries to make it taste good. It makes, it's okay with your belly, like meaning it doesn't yeah. make you feel sick or bloated or gassy yeah. or anything like that. It's but. like, you know, you're at, I, I love that you're asking us, but then we got to throw it back to you is like, okay, like how what is it results? making you feel? Yeah. Like if you, cause what may make us feel fine may not make you fine. Like people have different food intolerances. Mm -hmm. Like we're all different, different things with our digestive system. So if it's working for you and you're seeing the weight come off the scale or you're seeing the muscle go on your body, you're getting leaned down exactly. and you're feeling healthy and energetic, you're not feeling congested nasally and everything else that comes with the lactose intolerance, then by all means. Exactly. I mean, up. just because we diet a certain way doesn't mean you have to diet exactly like we do. Like if you want to be on a hundred percent vegan diet and you're loving the results you get from it, then more power to you. You know, we're not trying to sit here and tell you there's only one way and this is the right way and nothing else will work. Like yeah. you guys got to do whatever works for you. And we're just trying to inspire and encourage you to do that experimentation with your own body, your own diet, and kind of see if you like the results from what you're doing. And no matter what you're doing, even if you're doing exactly what we do, if the results are not good, then I would recommend you to try something else. With patience, though. Yeah, exactly. Don't so, jump around too yeah. much too fast because that's a disaster. <laughs> you got to give yourself a little time to see what's working or not. Okay, so hey, Brad and Jessica, I'm familiar. Oh, sorry. This is from Shazad on Snapchat. Um, I'm familiar with gaining muscle. You have to be in a caloric surplus and losing fat. You have to be in a caloric deficit. And I understand that you cannot do both at the same time. Eventually, I want to lose body fat and gain lean muscle. So I still lift weights, but I'm confused on my post-workout meal. Do I still need simple carbs like sugar immediately after workout to lose body fat? And if so, how much of it? I'm 175 to 180 with 17 to 18% fat. I really want to bring my body fat down more than anything. All right. Once again, there's I'm a, guessing this is a guy. <laughs> once again, there's a very, another very good question. Mm -hmm. Like as in you have a specific question and you give us just enough background information to be able to answer it like with somewhat insight. Yeah. yeah. Um, we so, still don't really know your age or your fitness level, but. Yeah. But, but 175 to 180 and 17 to 18% body fat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you still, if you are a guy, which mm -hmm. we assume you are, you yeah. still have a little bit of ways to go with your body fat to really like look lean and have your abs popping and everything. I always like to say like, get you down to 10% mm -hmm. and then you're good. Mm -hmm. So depending on how fast you want to do that, um, at this point you could cut out the carbs post workout, but it's not like you're obese. So I would actually right. keep the carbs in there because 17, 18%, you're still pretty lean. Yeah. So and we don't know your height, but I think 175 is like, you know, you're, dip, I, if, if you're Brad's height, that's a good weight for you. Yeah. So I would say like, keep in the carbs post workout, add the protein in. Um, and so for carbs, like I would have you at like 50 to 70 grams of carbs post workout, probably maybe on the lower end of that and just see how it goes until you keep getting that body fat down again yeah. uh, or keep reducing the body fat. And, and um, of course, depending on the rest of your day's meal plan, like how your day is laid out, like you want to 
you're going to figure out your grams post-workout depending on like everything else because you want your daily total to be on point. You know, yeah. that's the main thing. So, yeah, you so, do stack your, your simple carbs right after your workout yeah. for sure. But if your carbs are over for the day, that's worse than if you didn't get enough post-workout. So Does that's that a good sense? that's a good point. So, like, I based on that, I would have you on the 40-20-40. So 40% 40 of your calories from protein, 20% from carbs, and 40% from healthy fats. So, yeah, like, depending on how many calories you're having, I would have the majority of your carbs, like 50% of your carbs post-workout. And then, and then a little bit... The, in the morning and maybe afternoon. And then probably but, like yeah. another amount of carbs after the post-workout shake and then maybe the carbs pre-workout and I'd have it, you know, surround your workout with the carbs. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would try there, man. So, so try that out. Let us know what you feel like after, you know, six weeks. Not a day, not two days. <laughs> Give it some time, people. Yeah. And uh, let's get you down in body fat percentage and get you building muscle. Yeah, the other thing I'd like to emphasize is like, make sure you do your complete meal plan and not just figure out your post-workout meal. You know, a lot of people are asking, what do I eat post-workout? And we're like, well, it depends on what you're eating the rest of the day also. Because your post-workout meal, it matters, but it doesn't matter as much as your daily totals. Yeah. So, you know, you want to set yourself like, if you're not trying to lose weight, you're just trying to lose body fat, then you, I would set you right at your like maintenance calorie level and then do the like lifting recomp. workout, the recomp. Yeah. Like we yeah. always talk about. So live lean afterburn is going to be an awesome program for you. It comes with nutrition guide that you can figure out what your numbers are yeah. and it gives you even like a sample. Here's what you might eat for the day. Yeah. So I would check that out. And then just like I said, really emphasize that your whole day's worth of food is right for your goal and not just focus on your post-workout meal only. All right, next question on Snapchat from Gret Barr it says, hey guys, I know sodium is one thing to avoid while living lean, but what about sodium in prawns? Is it bad for us and in anchovies? I really like both and they seem to have a lot of sodium, so I am confused if I should keep eating them or is it a big no-no? <laughs> Um, Sodium's bad for you, bro. <laughs> did you, I was just going to say, did you do a video on that? No. Like I don't remember. The wrong types of sodium, like everything yeah. else, the wrong types of X is bad. Like the kind that comes in packaged and yeah. processed foods, like, which honestly are full of all kinds of stuff other than sodium, which is even worse for you. Yeah, like, like, we're, like the society that we're in now is, is having problems with sodium and blood pressure and everything because it's the processed foods. It's not the not, it's not the adding salt, salt to yeah. your food. It's adding well. It could be if the food's already loaded with salt, like the fast food industry is. Um, so that's the issue. So you you mention um, sodium in prawns, which I do know that. Like, yeah, they are high. They are like, a little you bit. You feel salty when yeah, you I eat do. them, right? Yeah, you're and, always saying that. It's like I and get anchovies. Puppy. But I don't like anchovies personally, but... Oh, I do anchovies, but... Yeah. Do I, they have a lot of so sodium in them? Um, well, it's canned, right? So yeah. sometimes it does. But if you're not out eating McDonald's every day, you're, you're pounding back like sodium rich... Uh, like, I mean, bread is high in sodium. A lot of people don't realize that. Like traditional, conventional bread. Soups are some of the worst. Soups, like canned soups and uh, like frozen dinners. Del and, yeah. de deli, deli meats. Deli meats, yeah. Like you go have a Subway sub... Um, you're going to be up there in sodium, right? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. So no, like we're not against sodium. We just prefer like everything. We like to add sodium to our food. Give us the whole food. Like it grows from the earth. Then we'll add in spices and stuff to it to make it taste good. So, um, do it up. So anchovies are good. Prawns are good. Keep doing that. And you guys know we use Himalayan pink salt in like all of our recipes and that's what we use at home. So we're not using like regular white table salt, which, you know, if you can make the switch, it's better. If you use either pure sea salt or like Himalayan salt like that is, it's a healthier salt for you, has more minerals in it and it's just better for you overall. So yeah, I mean, number one thing, I wouldn't stress about the sodium when you're making foods at home yep. and everything. What I would watch out for is all the packaged foods, but you know, don't, don't eat that stuff anyway. So if you're not eating it, you don't have to worry about it. All right, our last question comes from Apexer Forever. What constitutes a free food? Can you really eat as much of them as you want? If I'm counting my calories, should I still include them? I've measured out some things and it seems as though I eat at least a couple of calories worth of vegetables a day. A couple. A couple, so oh, two really? calories. <laughs> no, sorry. But, um, You've done a video on this yeah, before. I, I think you got, say, some, yeah, you got some a, negative feedback on it too. Yeah, some of the commentary has been like a little edgy. But you know what's funny about that video? It got picked up on a show in the UK. Oh, yeah. And the show was actually like, 
it featured a couple different YouTubers and their opinions on whether some foods are free foods or not. And they did an actual experiment, like scientific clinical experiment or whatever. And they found that I was actually right. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> I know. That was the so, best. well, what were you right about? I was, I was just right about that the amount of calories that are in certain vegetables, it's and this is only for vegetables, vegetables fruits yeah. don't count. And it's only certain vegetables too, it's not all of them. The amount of calories in them is so negligible and so low, especially compared to the amount of water and fiber that these vegetables contain, that when you eat them, it actually takes your body more calories to digest and, and break them down than the food actually contains itself. It's, so like, the it's old, like a negative calorie. It's like the old saying that if you're starving on an island and there's a celery there, don't, don't eat, eat it. it. <laughs> Because celery doesn't have enough calories in it, you actually burn more calories than you actually consume by eating celery. Yeah, so it's, it's so watery and it's so fibrous that yeah. so, it just doesn't count. So basically, <laughs> like when, when we're doing meal plans and everything, we don't include calories from spinach, from asparagus, bell pepper, like, like the, onions, the, garlic. The fibrous yeah. vegetables, we don't count calories in. But then when you get into fruit, yes. And fruit. starchy veggies. And so, oh yeah, starchy veggies. Sweet potatoes, Sweet potatoes definitely, definitely count. Definitely, yeah. Squashes count, carrots count, stuff like that. But um, you know, honestly, like when we're adding carrots to a salad or something, it's, yeah, it's, it's like so a small. handful. It's a tiny amount and it's for two people yeah. and we don't count it. But if we were gonna eat like a giant plate full of carrots, then I would definitely count that as carbs. So it just kind of depends. Like you're saying, can I really eat as much as I want? Yes and no. Like, do you really want to eat a bucket full of carrots? <laughs> like, do you? You know, I'm just saying, like, I don't think you actually want to eat as much as it would take for you to have to and, count the calories. And there's so much it. fiber in the f vegetables that it's going to fill you and up. If you really want to eat a full head of cabbage, then totally do it. And yeah. yes, it would be free, in my opinion. Yeah. But, um, you're saying you measure them. When you plug these things into MyFitnessPal, you plug in broccoli for say, or celery, it is gonna give you some calories. Like there are some calories in these foods, but it's just like we're talking about the thermic effect of food and how it reacts in your body's digestive system. That's when it becomes negative. Like yeah. in it of itself, it does have calories, but when you consume it, it's like a free food because yeah. it kind of erases itself just through digestion. So. Don't stress too much when you're adding like vegetables, especially like the watery ones, you know, bok choy, collard greens, kale, all that stuff. Go watch my video to see them. I like kind of displayed which ones are free. Um, but yeah, don't count them because honestly, you guys, ain't nobody getting fat off of too many veggies. Like it just isn't what's making you fat. Like you gotta stop worrying about the veggies and you know, start eating more veggies because they're the one thing that's gonna help you eat in abundance and still slim down. Yeah, give, you, give your plate volume, volume so you feel like you actually are eating stuff. Absolutely, and you can season them in different ways that are also free, like some condiments we consider free, like mustard and Shalcha. hot sauce and salsa, yeah. exactly. So you can make things like delicious meals that are really low calorie. Yeah. There you go. Yes. I think that was a good show. Yeah, good job you guys, nice question. Yeah, so question of the day, is let's get back to what we talked about in the beginning is opinions from you guys on how we can spice up the show to keep it fresh to keep it uh you want us to call you changing yeah like any ideas on how we can take this q a show and just innovate it to make it even more engaging and to be able to get you guys involved get even more, more yeah. attention with you guys and give you guys more access to us and uh, yeah, we're always looking to help even more than what we're doing right now. So put it down in the comments. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks again for watching our show and being a subscriber here on this channel. You guys know it does mean a lot to us. We value every single one of you, 200,000 people. You know what would be even better if you shared us out? We, honestly. <laughs> don't be a hoarder. We don't, we don't like, we're throwing an ask out there to you. Like we don't ask for you guys to share us that often, but that's one of the best things that you could do, especially with the new year coming up. It's like, hey, you know, like here's a channel that tells you how it is. And, you know, they're both living what they're talking about. And uh, so feel free to share us out to your friends if you want. It would mean a lot to us. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And keep living lean. Living lean. Boy. Big shout out to all our Live Lean podcast listeners. We love you and would so appreciate it if you would give this podcast a review. We need your feedback to improve and grow. So please give us a review right now.